the conduct, the character, and the etiquette of a believer, of a Muslim, in regards to social media, when conducting oneself, when interacting with other people online, whether it be Facebook or Twitter or Tumblr or any other um, you know, form of social media that somebody might use. So a few ayat I wanted to share with you. The first one is Surah number 4, Surah to nisa Ayah number 131. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Most definitely we have firmly commanded Right, and the word comes from wasiyah, which means like a, la a last will, a last bequest, a last a dying request. And the purpose here is being metaphorically used to give the emphasis that this is some serious advice, that if you remember anything else ever, remember this. So Allah SWT says that the, some of the most important advice that we gave to the people of the book that came before, the people that were given the book before you, and we're giving you the same advice as well, is that always be conscious of Allah. Always think of Allah. Always remember Allah. Always know that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is constantly watching you. And He hears all, He knows all, He sees all. That you never leave the dominion of Allah. You never exit the jurisdiction of Allah. You are always under Allah's watch and Allah's control. Remember that this is one of the universal teachings of Islam. Some of the basic things to keep in mind about how to conduct ourselves online and what to be careful about, you know, the etiquettes of the Facebook Muslim, if you will. All right. Number one is that be truthful to Allah and be truthful to yourself. One of the biggest problems we have today is we almost like people live a dual life. People basically have a split personality. They are somebody else in real life in person and they act com like somebody completely totally different online. Don't do that because that is lying. And that's actually one of the worst forms of lying because you're lying to Allah and you're lying to yourself. That actually will cause serious spiritual repercussions and that also has very serious, even over time, emotional and psychological repercussions. So be very careful about that. Be yourself, be confident in who you are. Don't mask yourself online. Don't act like somebody that you're not online. Be yourself, number one. Number two is that respect other people's privacy. All right? Respect other people's privacy. I know there's a lot of jokes and there's little viral videos about Facebook stalkers and that's a little running joke amongst people who engage in social media. As much as we joke about it, it's really something that's not really funny. You know when you invade somebody's privacy and you're looking at somebody else's pictures and you're looking at some sister's pictures who practices hijab and she put her pictures for her own friends or her own family and now you're invading their privacy, you're getting into people's personal business and you're trying to see what's going on with people and keep a tab on people and things like that, that's something that's very unhealthy. Number one, you're invading somebody's privacy, you're violating somebody else's rights. You know, and the example, the Prophet taught us a, a line of thinking, a line of logic and reasoning that makes a lot of sense. How would you like it if somebody else did that to your wife or your sister or your daughter? What if somebody started creeping into the personal pictures and the privacy of your daughter, your sister, your wife? Would you appreciate it? Of course not. So how could you do that to somebody else? So respect other people's privacy. Number three is that don't expose your sins online. Number, and that's a part of the haya. Try to be modest. But if you do have certain issues that you're still recovering from, there are certain sins that you engage in, and I hope and I pray and I encourage that you work on them, repairing them. But at the least, as a first step of recovering from your sin, or whatever problem you have, at the very least, don't plaster it all over Facebook. Don't put it online. Don't expose your own sin. That, that's some of the worst things. The Prophet ﷺ says that the, there is nobody worse than someone whom who committed a sin at night and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hid his sin covered his sin only for that person to go out there in the morning the next day and expose his own sin himself I did this and I did that and they're bragging that's what we do today we take a picture while we're committing a sin we brag about committing a sin so don't expose your sins online cover your sins and in fact work on them and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allows to remove your sins the last piece of advice I'll add on here is and this is the bottom line. Is Facebook halal or haram? You know, is social media allowed or not? Is it permissible or impermissible? You know what? The answer to this is the answer, same answer that we give to a lot of these similar issues. 
it's what you make of it. It's, it's permissible, it's allowed, but it's either not, neither completely halal or neither completely haram. It's what you make of it. It's what you do with it. That's what it is. It's any tool and it's any medium. It's what you're doing with it. All right? So based on your activity, it'll determine, mashallah. If you do end up getting these videos through Facebook, that's a good thing that's being done. The message of Allah, the message of the Quran, the message of Islam is being spread through Facebook. That's a good thing. Then all of a sudden when you post your, a picture of yourself doing something haram, now you just did something bad with it. So it's what you make of it. And at the very end, even if you are not doing anything bad, you're doing something kind of in the middle, you're just communicating with friends and family, even then, the last thing that you have to take into consideration is, does it become a distraction between you and Allah? Does it become a distraction between you and Allah? You know, nobody on this planet will tell you playing basketball is haram. It's a sport. It's a physical activity. Playing basketball is not haram. But playing basketball becomes a problem when the adhan is being called and the iqama is being called and it's qadaqamati salah, qadaqamati salah, it's time for prayer. But I can't get off the basketball court. I'm so obsessed with this game, I can't get off the basketball court. Now my basketball just became a problem for me. Because it got in the way between me and Allah and my relationship with Allah. So make sure Facebook doesn't come into your relationship with Allah. Make sure you pray and you pray on time. Make sure you make time for Quran. Make sure you make time to read the life of the Prophet So don't let it come in between your relationship with Allah and your relationship with your family and your friends. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability to practice everything that was said and heard. May Allah allow us to make the best use of all of these different tools and these different opportunities.